them, you may be also. And I read that again. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He goes on to say, and whether I go you know and the way you know, and Thomas says, Lord, how do we know? What is the way? And Jesus says these words that we know so well. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's a promise. That's a promise. You ain't even get there any old way you want. You'll come God's way or you won't go. Amen? Amen. He said, I'm going to go prepare a place for you and I'm going to come back. Paul would put it this way, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. So you might be thinking, well, what if I die before He comes back? That's all right. You're going to get to go first. Amen. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord of the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then it says, Comfort one another with these words. This is a promise for the bill. Oh, it might not have happened in your mama's time. It might not have happened in Brother Hinton. I heard Brother Hinton say numerous times that he believes that he'd be living when Jesus comes. He believed that the Lord was going to come back before he died. Well, it didn't happen. But that don't mean God ain't still got it on His calendar. Amen? That don't mean Jesus ain't coming back. He promised it. Even whenever He was going up into heaven there in the book of Acts, Two men in white apparel said, Why stand ye here gazing? Amen. This same Jesus that you see leaving in like manner is coming back just like He said. He's coming back. Well, I don't believe it. Well, I can't help that. He's coming back. Whether you believe it or not. A lot of things happened in your lifetime you didn't believe would ever happen. Amen. Amen. A lot of things. Brother Tommy was talking to me last night. He was reading some history there and Somewhere in the around the nineteen early nineteen hundreds, I think he said nineteen twenty something. A teacher was thrown in jail for teaching Darwinism in class. Do you hear that? Because this teacher was saying we came from monkeys, God didn't create us. They threw that teacher in jail. Less than forty years later, we take prayer out of school. Amen. Ever since then, they've been trying to get God out of the Pledge of Allegiance and taking the Ten Commandments down. I guarantee you that people there in the 1920s when they jailed that person for teaching Darwinism, they probably thought, they might not have thought he needed to be put in jail or her or whoever it was, but they would have thought, man, he's crazy. He's teaching we come from monkeys. That's plum crazy. But now they're teaching them that there ain't no God. Amen? It wouldn't be less, less than 40 years. That's how quick things change. They'd be taking prayer out of school. Paul would tell us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Nothing about no soul sleep, Brother Bill. Amen? When you die and your body, when your body goes to the grave, you don't have to wait there with your, your soul and spirit. don't have to wait there before it, it meets with the Lord. Amen? You step out of this old body into the presence of a living God. That's what the Bible teaches, period. That's a promise from God. You can count on it. But my pastor said, I don't care what he said, the Bible says to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Amen? Paul said, it's better that I go on now. Why? So he could sleep until Jesus came? No. So that he could go ahead and be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 When you pass on, you pass on. You don't hang around here for a while. Amen. Hallelujah. Your old body does. And that's all right. He'll come back and get it later. Amen. <laughs> My goodness. I feel good enough to die today. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all of your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, that sounds like a promise to me. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That sounds like a promise to me, Brother Bill. Amen? Yeah. That sounds awful close to being a promise to me. Yeah. It's time we got a hold of the promises of God and put our faith, Sister Nancy, in His Word and not our feelings. Amen? Amen. Because when they turn loose with the persecution trying to get you to take the mark or try to get you to quit worshiping the true living God, 
You probably ain't going to feel like jumping a pew. But if you got faith in His Word, faith in His promises, if you judge Him faithful who has promised, if you know who you have believed and you are persuaded that He is able, that's what's going to see you through, Brother Bill. I like to shout. I like to dance. Y'all know that. You've seen me rolling floors. Almost every place I ever preached revival, I wind up in the floor sometime or another. But I think the feeling's going to get me out of here, Brother Slater. It's His Word. When I lay on my deathbed and I can't feel the goosebumps, I ain't able, Sister Vani, to get up and do the Holy Ghost two-step. But I can lay there and say, I am now ready. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Sister Nancy, I have judged Him faithful who has promised. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that He is able. His Word's going to get us out of here. Amen? Amen. These Scriptures testify of Him. He turned to a bunch of people one time. And he said, look at the Scripture wherein you think you find eternal life. See, they thought the more Scripture they knew, the more holy they were, Brother Bill. Amen? we got people like that today. Ran into one when I used to work at Walmart. Came up to me and said, how much of it can you quote? I turned around and said, how much of it can you live? Really? I know a lot of people quote it. Oh, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Talking is one thing. Walking is something else. Yeah. Amen? But His Word is what's going to see us through. And you grab a hold of something. You don't, you don't have to know all of them. Honey, one of these that gets you through. Amen? Just knowing that all things work together for your good to help you through the trials and the valley. Mm -hmm. Amen? Knowing that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will help you get saved. Amen? That'll do it. You don't have to know all the doctrines. Knowing that if you confess your sins, He is faithful to forgive you. will keep you from sitting around being beat over the head of the enemy saying, you ain't never going to get forgiveness. You ain't never going to get forgiveness. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done in the past. Only reason He reminds you of your past because He knows what kind of future He got in store for Him. Amen? 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 Next time He reminds you of your past, turn to Him and tell Him a little bit about His future. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen? My goodness. Oh, that song last week that we had. I'm closing. I promise. <coughs> every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. All the blessings of His love divine. Every promise in the book is mine. I have judged Him faithful who has promised and I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that He is able. Stand on His promises today because His Word will see you through. Amen? His Word will get you out of here. Hallelujah. Somebody else this morning have something.